بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایوریون آی هوپ یو آر کیپینگ ویل آی تھوٹ می بی انشاءالله وی کین هاف ا دیسکشن اباوت دات ا um, discussion that would help us uh, benefit more after all they have said that the best um, amal you can do on this day is thinking tafakkur and um, so that's inshallah what we try to do tonight together tafakkur think together and see um, how can we benefit more one of the important things we need to realize is that we are smarter than we give ourselves credits for, right? A lot of us act as if we don't know if we've had a good night of God, a bad night of God, what is it all about, right? We act a little bit confused. Which dua should I read? Should I do this? Should I do that? Okay, did I do it right? Did it work? You know, as if we're dealing with a strange mysterious thing which we have no ability to understand right and this is the point from which we uh, get hurt a lot why because i think unfortunately a lot of us don't gain anything from our nights of qadr right and this is it may sound a little bit like harsh or weird but When you look at our hadith, you actually see that the imams didn't have any problem with saying these things, right? For example, the imam would say that um, if you pray 20 years but it doesn't change you, all of that is gone to waste. No benefit for you. There's another hadith that says so many people can fast the whole month but have no outcome, right? So you can see that for the uh, for our imams, for in this religion, what is important is the change inside you. It's not about doing certain things, right? Do them as much as you want. The Imam says if it doesn't lead to a change here inside you, it has no outcome. It could be fasting, it could be reciting Quran, it could be praying. For every single one of these, we have a hadith. That if it doesn't lead to a change within, it's pointless. And sometimes it's worse than pointless. It actually harms you. Why? Because if you keep doing something without gaining any, any benefit, slowly, slowly, you'll give up. You'll let go. And by that, you close the door to yourself, right? You'd never come back to it to revisit. Whereas maybe if you had never done it, finally, someday, you would have found the right way of doing it, right? And the night of God is the same. It's not a magical thing. That, you know, you don't know how it happened. Let me give you a few examples so we know what we're talking about, right? Um, for example, look at last year's, right? The Knights of God that happened uh, in the previous years. And then look at yourself or the people you know. And then see, did they change as a result of the Knights of God? For example, last year, similar nights, all of us... Um, had the night of Al-Qadr, right? All of us said, خَلَّسْنَا مِنَ النَّارِ يَا مُجِيرِ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ All of that we ask. But okay, now when we look at the community this year, when we look at myself, when you look at yourself, do we feel like as a result of our nights of Qadr, this year was different to the years before? Has our community changed to a different community? If not, then... What did we do, right? What, why do we think that we achieved something? If we look back and we see yes, Javad is the same Javad he was last year before Knights of God. He's dealing with the same kind of issues. He's still getting angry. He's still dealing with stress. He's still not enjoying his prayer. He's still not... Uh, he, he was loving even before Knights of God. His love hasn't increased. His control, his ability... To control his anger has not increased. His ability to forgive others has not increased. He's the same guy he was before the Knights of God. Yes, maybe for a few hours during that night, he really tried to be nice. But that's it. Only for a few hours. As soon as the Knights of God finished, he's the same dude he was. Right? Or you look at yourself and you say, maybe yeah, it seems like I'm the same person I was. Well, if that's the case, 
then maybe one thing we can think about tonight, and they said the best thing is thinking, is what should I be doing? Am I really going to spend this night, the next one, the next one, and then the next year, and then the year after that, doing things which don't actually lead to any change in me? Why? Right? Now, imagine, let me give us a few examples to, so that this really is, um, I can bring the point home, right? Imagine tonight, God, forgive, God forgives me for all the times I was angry, right? For all the things I did, for all the mistakes I made. Let's say God forgave all of that. Let's say, right? Um, in brackets, we don't even know what forgiveness means. Inshallah, I'll try to talk about that maybe if we have time. Let's say you kept saying astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. And you know they're sending us these amals that we should be doing. Yes, do this, then do that, then do this, then do that, then do this one. Then do 10 pages of this one, then 12 pages of that one, then 5 pages of this. Then maybe you did it right, maybe. We never know. Did you, did you do the 10 pages of that one as well, right? We do all of this. Let's say I did all the 10 pages, 20 pages, 30 pages, 40 pages, this prayer, that prayer, that dua, that dhikr. I did all of that. And then God forgave me. But if tomorrow the night of God is finished and tomorrow again I go and I get angry, what was the point of being forgiven? I'm still living as the same person, right? Okay, that anger was forgiven. I have a new one. Tomorrow another one. The day after another one. If I go out of this, for example, night and the day after, I'm still getting angry. I still find it difficult to love people. I still find it difficult to forgive people, right? I still find it difficult to apologize. I still find it difficult to admit when I'm wrong, right? So if I haven't changed anything, what's the point of being forgiven? If I'm going to create every single thing again? For... And now the question is this. If the anger is still in me, if the jealousy is still in me, if the inability to control my anger is still in me, if the inability to ignore the mistake of my loved one is not in is still in me the inability am i really even forgiven right so maybe we can even talk about what is forgiveness right do you think forgiveness for example is like a delete button in a record system you go to god and say ya allah delete all the things i did and then god says shift and delete you know and then a notification comes for god if you say shift and delete it would be deleted forever are you sure god and god says yes shift and delete forget it and then you suddenly uh, have all of your wrong actions deleted without any change inside does that make sense no forgiveness of for example jealousy is for jealousy to be removed from you as much as jealousy is healed in me, I've been forgiven, right? But if jealousy is still in me, if anger is still in me, if lack of forgiveness is still in me, well, no matter what happens to my previous records, I can create everything again from tomorrow, right? So that's why in the hadiths, they say, don't, don't worry about the past. The past, of course, if you've harmed someone, you have to make up for it, definitely. And the interesting thing is, if we harmed someone, then no matter how many times we say Astaghfirullah, God says, dude, that's between you and this person you hurt. I have to go and apologize. So the harms we've done to others, that's between us and them. We have to go make up for it, right? But the harm that we've done to ourselves, or for example, the things that we want to uh, ask God for forgiveness, will only be forgiven as much as we are healed, as much as we get rid of that, right? Otherwise, tomorrow we'll go and do the same thing which is what we do every year, right? Because they tell us that, yes, do this amal, do that amal, and do that amal, then mwah, your next year, your destiny, oh, beautiful, right? That's it. You don't need to change. You don't need to heal. All you need to do is these pen, pen, 10 pages, right? Between you, my friend. Like, it, it almost seems like, like, a, like an ad, right? Between you, my friend, and the destiny you want is only 10 pages of Joshan Kabir. Recite it and get the destiny you want, right? Is this really the case? Well, how come I recited this dua every year and every year, some of us three nights, and I still am the same person I was? Right? Is this the destiny I wanted to be the same person who cannot show love? Now, if you want to have a real growth, right? 
then you can look at what some of our spiritual teachers said. This is not for me. Our spiritual teachers always used to say this, but unfortunately, no one listens to the spiritual teachers, right? Everyone wants to do more a'mal, right? But when you look at, for example, what the ahadith tells us or what our spiritual teachers used to tell us, they said, my friend, you recited, how old are you? Are you like 30 years old like me? 20 years old, 25, 40, 50, 65, 75. How old are you? How many Joshan Kabir did you read? Okay. Maybe 100 times you've recited this. Maybe 20 times. Maybe 30 times. Well, how similar are you to the way God describes himself in that dua? Right? Maybe if instead of reading the whole thing, we'd just taken the first line, the first 10 qualities in Joshan Kabir, and try to be like that, we would be in a different case by now. How does it start, right? The, the Joshan Kabir, the first 10, what does it have inside it? Ya Alim or Ya Halim, the one who knows but is also patient. Okay, are we like that? If I, for example, know that my partner, made a mistake, maybe said something behind me, or my friend said something about me, or my child did something wrong. Can I be patient with it? Do I have the ability to show love, right? If instead of reading this to all for 20 years, we had just read the first line, God is introducing himself. He says, Ya Alim, Ya Halim. The one who knows, but is still, despite the knowledge he has, he's patient, Halim, right? So if I had tried to be like that, Maybe after 10 years, at least I had this one quality, right? And then you continue reading. What does it say? Ya ghafir al khati'at. Ya ghafir al khataya. Right? And then it also, so not only God forgives mistakes, forgives shortcomings, but God says, I cover it as well, right? Javad, Shomali, you've made loads of mistakes. God is telling me, right? But I have covered a lot of those. I didn't let many people know what kind of mistakes you've made, right? And all of us, were, we make mistakes, right? None of us can say I haven't made mistakes. We all have. God is telling us, Javad, I don't know, Fatima, Zahra, Hussein, Ali, Sina, whatever your beautiful name is. I am like this. When I see one of you guys makes a mistake, not only I forgive, but I also try to cover so that you don't lose your reputation with others, so that you don't become humiliated, right? Just this. Let's say if one night of God, we read up to this part and we stopped here, right? We asked the dear reciter, dear reciter, I think I've had enough. This is beautiful. You know what? I want to spend the rest of this night just reflecting on this. Have I been like that? Do I, have I been able to forgive the shortcomings of my partner, of my friend, of my father, of my child? Have I been able to do that, right? Not just that, not just forgive, but also to, to cover as well, to pretend like I don't know. Have I ever done that with anyone? Have I ever had this ability that when someone makes some mistakes, I pretend like I didn't even know so that even inside they wouldn't feel bad? Have I done that? If not, then what's the point of reciting this to all till the end, Right? What's the point of it if we read it and read it and read it and don't get changed, right? And then we think that after we get to this part, and you know, with a little bit of closed eyes and a little bit of like this, oh God, save us from the fire. We say this and we feel like there is a fire from which we are going to be saved, but we don't know we are the fire from which we have to be saved. If I don't have enough love, if I don't have forgiveness, I am that fire from which I have to be saved. Right? Why? Because if, I, if I'm not strong with forgiveness, if I'm not strong with my love, then as soon as my friend does something, I can't forgive and life becomes hell for me. I am living in a life which is colored by my inability to love, by my inability to be patient, by my inability to forgive, to let go, right? So this, we keep saying, but if jealousy is still in me, right? If jealousy is still in me, tomorrow I'll go 
I see someone has something that I want, I get jealous and life is hell for me. Right? So this nar that we want to be saved from is within us. When you say, It's not an imaginary fire that you don't know what's happening. It's these things inside us which need healing. Right? So this is why I said forgiveness, the quality of forgiveness is healing. Right? So if I want to be saved from, for example, the fire of jealousy, I have to work on myself. Admit it. Yes. Sometimes I get jealous. Yes, I don't want to be like that. It's fine. It's okay. There are two forces within me. As Imam Sajjad said in Munajat al Khamsasha, he says, Ilahi ashku ilayka nafsan bisu'i ammara. Imam Sajjad says, God within me is teaching us. Within me, I have two forces a force which doesn't like my jealousy and a part of me that feels jealous. I have both of them in me. I observe them. So I try. To go to the one that doesn't like the jealousy and heal the part that is jealous. I don't try to ignore it. I don't try to feel bad about it because this is who I am. I'm like this. Why should I? Right? I've come to you, God. I want to heal. And as long as I want to heal, why should I be ashamed? Right? If you have an illness and you go to the doctor, are you ashamed? Oh, my doctor, I'm so sorry. You know what? My arm hurts. Well, what's there to be ashamed of? Arms sometimes hurt, right? And that's what doctors are for. You go to the doctor, no, no need to be ashamed, right? So now we say to God, doctor, I feel jealousy inside. Can you heal this for me, right? I don't want to be uh, identifying with this. But there are so many things we need healing, right? What we can say, God, I, I feel sometimes inside myself... This inability to forgive, like there are things people have done to me 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, and I still haven't let go. Even today, I think about it and it burns my heart. You know, I feel my, ta- my chest tightens, right? I still feel it after 10 years, right? So when you say, Oh God, save me from this fire. One of this fire is this thing I've kept 10 years inside me. This person did something to me 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Right? That's it done. And I still am holding on to it. Right? And holding on to it. And it's still suffering from it. Right? If someone, for example, I don't know, shoots uh, shoots a bullet at you. You don't keep the bullet inside. You take the bullet out. Right? You take the bullet out. You don't want your body to be the graveyard of people's bullets. So if someone told me something or even did something to me 10 years ago, right? And it hurt me and I'm still keeping it. I can't let go. That is a nar. That is a fire because every day of my life I'm suffering as a result of that. Right? So when we say, This is what we're saying. God, heal me. It's not something magical, it's mysterious that we can't understand. No, you can understand it. You can feel it inside you, right? And, and so if, for example, you even said it 200 times, 300 times, and you said it with the most beautiful ways, no matter how beautiful your voice is, no matter how many times you said it, comes tomorrow. Something happens, you still hurt, you still feel jealousy, you still don't feel love, you still can't forgive. Well, what was the point of saying that? You are living in the suffering, you are living in that nar. You are carrying your nar wherever you go, right? So now, if we try to change our outlook towards this night, right? It's not about just checking some items on a list and then pretending like everything worked according to the plan, right? We need to stop pretending to each other. If after the nights of that last year, I didn't change, my friends didn't change, my community didn't change, then we need to do Laylatul Qadr in another way, right? And as the sooner we are honest with ourselves, the sooner we admit this, the sooner we can start towards actually benefiting from it, right? 
And even today, you know, because tonight is a night, a lot of us, we're trying to remember Imam Ali. And I was actually looking at the hadiths of Imam Ali. Oh my God, the amount of hadiths we have about this, right? For example, Imam says in Imam Hadith, this is a religion in which you don't care about the, uh, about the quantity. You care about the quality, right? It's not about how many lines of Joshan Kabir you read. It's about how many phrases did you try to implement in your life, right? I said, if just one quality we take from Joshan Kabir, out of all these names, we just take one, right? Ya, for example, Ghafir al Khataya, right? Just the one who forgives. If we just practice forgiveness in our life, imagine how much our life would change, right? Because, and, and you know, this night, I've seen that a lot of people try to send messages to each other. You know what? Forgive me. Oh, it's the night in which if you don't forgive me, I can't make the most out of my Laylatul Ghad, right? So even forgiveness becomes a kind of transaction. Forgive me because I want to have a good Laylatul Ghad, right? God said, I, I need your forgiveness, right? It, how serious is that? How genuine is that? If it's just you want to have a nice Laylatul Qad and you ask forgiveness, that's it. That's not asking for forgiveness. And the other person on that side, okay, I forgive you. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness means that I have grown, right? What happens when someone hurts us, right? Someone hurts us and we can't handle it and we keep it inside us. We keep it inside, right? Maybe five year passes, 10 year passes, right? And we may not even remember that incident anymore. But as soon as something happens outside that triggers it, it comes out, right? Maybe, for example, a friend abandoned us. And that really hurt us, right? A friend abandoned us, really hurt us. We, our heart broke. Now, anywhere in a book, in a movie, as soon as we see a friend breaks the heart of another friend, we go back to that wound, right? We go back there. It becomes fresh and it makes us suffer, right? Now, and, and, and someone, when someone tells us, forgive that person, right? We think like we're doing them a favor, although we are doing them a favor. But it's not just that. It's way beyond that, right? So the person, why should I forgive them? They did this to me. Well, if you don't forgive them, you are suffering. You are hurting yourself, right? Every time something triggers it, this comes out. This nar, this fire you've kept inside you. As soon as you read about someone breaking someone's heart, it comes out and it hurts you. So you haven't forgiven, right? Now, not only you haven't forgiven, but it doesn't matter. Even if you tell that person, you know what? I forgive you. But it's still there. What I'm saying is that tonight, try go down and heal this. Right? Not just by your tongue, I forgive you. Even that is beautiful. Bless you. But I'm saying go deeper. Heal. Right? Work on this chest so it can handle more. You have no idea how strong you are. Right? And actually there's a hadith by Imam Ali that if you work hard on yourself, if you try to go and heal, one by one, I know it hurts. I know when your heart broke, it was like a wound. It left a scar. I know. But we can go and, and, and heal this one by one. And tonight, one of the things we can do is that, right? Go to one of these memories and try and slowly, slowly say, okay, that person didn't know. They hurt me. Why should I carry their shortcoming? Maybe that person has even changed, right? A lot of us, we have broken hearts, right? Maybe we were younger. Maybe we were immature. We broke hearts. But maybe that person has changed now. Maybe they learned their lesson. So why shouldn't I move on? Why am I keeping this thing which is only harming me? Why should I allow my body to be the garbage of people's past? Right? So you go down and you try to heal it. Right? And when you heal it, slowly, slowly, you become like God. You find this quality of being the forgiver of mistakes. Not just that. Even sometimes ignoring people's mistakes. Right, your chest um, widens, your ability increases, and then you reach a level where people's words wouldn't even harm you anymore. Someone would say something, but you're like, okay, 
you know, this is a shortcoming on their side, right? If, for example, this person said something offensive to me, why should I allow that to hurt me? That's, they are hurting. They are damaging their soul, right? I should try and help them actually to heal themselves. If someone said something offensive to me, right? And you've practiced healing on yourself, you wouldn't even allow it to affect you, right? Because you know that ultimately your worth is coming from within you. Your worth comes from your connection with God. No matter what anyone does, no one can lower your worth. No one can offend you. Your value is amazing. Your value is amazing. Right? Sheikh Father said that it was after the creation of Insan that God congratulated himself. <laughs> Imagine how amazing you are that after God created you, God congratulated himself. That's your worth. No one can change that. No one can lower it. No matter what they say. No matter what they do. If someone abandoned me, if someone abandoned you, that they, there's something wrong with them, with their vision, not with me. Why should I keep that inside me and allow it to hurt me? Let go of that, right? Just letting go of one of these, finding the ability to let go of one of these is more precious than reciting 20 pages, 30 pages of things we don't understand or of things that don't change us. Right? So not only we should get to a level where, where we can heal ourselves and forgive as a result of that, right? Then a person who reaches that state can even help others heal themselves, right? Let's say my partner does something to me or a friend does something bad, breaks my heart, let's say. Well, before this, all my mind was, oh my God, they hurt me. So I was just suffering. Right? I didn't have time to help them. I was just dealing with the hurt. But now, if I heal myself, and then my friend, my partner, my child, my father, someone hurts me, breaks my heart, well, it won't affect me as much. I don't allow it to lower my worth. But all I think about is, oh, 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 oh my God. This person is doing something that is damaging their soul, right? This person, for example, through their anger, oh, they're creating fire inside themselves. You remember how we said the fire that we're trying to be saved from is within us? The jealousy, the anger. So now if I see someone's angry at me, my first reaction is not that, oh, why are you angry to me? I'm like, oh, this person is angry right now. They're creating fire inside themselves. I don't want them. Because, you know, remember the times you were angry? The person who's suffering the most is the one who's angry. Right? The one who's going through that. It, literally, your face, your color changes. Right? Your heart beats. The person in fire is the one who is in, who's angry. So now if I see my loved one is hurting me, is angry at me, my friend, my partner, now I feel bad for them. Now I become like God. I become like God, right? Now I become someone who is not hurt, but now tries to show love, right? So I make sure how this person, you know, even this person who's angry at me right now, at the core of it, this is a beautiful person. There's a beautiful soul there, right? They may have even done so many good things for me. Now they're making a mistake. I've made the mistake so many times. So my worry right now should not be to, you know, to protect myself. I've healed myself before. I've done my work. Now my worry is how can I help them? How can I save this beautiful soul in front of me from the fire they are creating through their own anger? So, for example, I know if I get defensive, if I say something back, that would just make them more angry, right? So they'll create more fire. If I don't forgive them quickly, they may feel that their pride is hurt. So they may go and do it more, right? But if I forgive them, if I make it easier for them, right, to, to ask for forgiveness, sometimes we make it so difficult for people to apologize, right? There's this beautiful hadith from Imam Hussein that says, if someone came and swore at you, said something really nasty to you in this ear, 
and then came to this ear and said, I'm sorry, I didn't do it, or something like that. If, forgive them. Forgive them, right? Why forgive them, you ask? Why? Because this is a beautiful soul in front of you. The soul was created by God. They made a mistake. They said something wrong. They got angry. They created fire, right? They created fire. And if you don't forgive, they'll stay in that fire. They'll stay in that fire. They may even, you know, try to get defensive and make more fire. But when you forgive, right, you may say, oh, they're, they're, they're not worth it. Well, as long as they're not worth it, they haven't healed. So they're not really forgiven, right? Forgiveness is not a magical thing that you can still be jealous and angry and be forgiven as well. No, that person would be forgiven when he or she is worth it. But by forgiving them, you take the first step, right? You make it easier for them now to sit down and heal themselves, right? You lower the cost. And don't worry, as long as anger is with that person, as long as, you know, foul language, jealousy, whatever, is with that person, they haven't really healed. So forgiveness is a real change inside. And if you can help a person, right? When I say help someone, you know, forgive someone and help them, I don't mean that they would keep their anger and they're forgiven. No, help someone get rid of their anger. Help someone get rid of this fire they've created around their soul. When they see your love, right? Because a lot of us, we need love to heal ourselves, right? Imam Ali salam says in Ziyarat Aminullah, إِلَٰهِ لَيْسَ لِحَوْلٌ فَأَنْتَقِلَ بِهِ عَنْ مَعْسِيَتِكَ إِلَّا فِي وَقْتٍ أَيْقَظْتَنِ لِمَحَبَّتِكَ God, I have no strength by which to save myself, to heal myself, other than the time I feel you love me. I am awakened to your love. Why? Because we need to feel loved. We need to feel worthy so that we go through the difficulty of healing ourselves. Because healing is not easy all the time, right? When you want to, for example, heal a wound, when you want to heal a loss, it's not easy. It's like going through that loss one more time. Or if you want to heal someone who's, you know, broken your heart, it's as if you're living that experience one more time. So you have to know it's worth it. You have to know that at the end of this, at the end of this difficult healing process, there's something which is worth it. And love gives this to you, right? You know, what is it like? Imagine you have a terrible injury and you need a surgery, right? If they tell you that, for example, you need a surgery on your hand, if they tell you that even after the surgery, not much is going to happen, you still can't use this hand. So you'll be like, why should I go through the pain of surgery, opening this wound, stitching it, doing this, doing that, and at the end I can't even use it? it you know, you may say that, right? But if someone tells you, no, no, you may go through pain. It's going to be very painful. The operation, we need to open your hand, we need to do this and then stitch it. It's going to be very painful. But at the end of it, you may gain, for example, 20% of your hand. Or your hand becomes like, you know, you can, like fresh, you can use your hand. So it's worth it. Right? So you say, okay, I'll go through this difficulty because it's worth it. So we need to feel like we are worth it. There's something inside us at the other side of this process of healing, this process of forgiveness, this process of getting rid of my addictions, being addiction to, I don't know, seeking attention, being addiction to porn, being addiction to whatever thing which takes my calm away from me or that or for example my my jealousy or for example my anger whatever it is i have to know that the pain i need to go through to heal myself the difficulty is worth it and god says it is god says you know what what you know what happens on the other side of it on the other side of it you find yourself this beautiful soul that i created right and when I fought with him in Ruhi, and I blew into you from my own spirit, God says. So on the other side of this process of healing, you find yourself. 
But which self? The self that is so precious, that is so valuable, that is so worthy that God congratulated himself for creating you. And the soul that always feels love, always feels connection to God. The part of you that is already connected to God. You already are. You just don't feel it. God says, We're closer to you than your jugular vein. You know what that means? It means that we are closer to you than this experience you have of yourself. You don't feel it, but deep down within you, you're already connected to God. God is already there with you. At the deepest level of who you are, you're connected to God. You feel worthy. You feel connection. You don't feel lonely. You feel valuable. You feel precious. You feel calm. Life makes sense. You don't feel abandoned. You feel connected. You already have all of this. You just need to heal yourself to feel it. Right? So that's why a person needs to feel worthy so that they can go and change themselves. Right? So we need to feel worthy and God keeps telling you, you're worthy. You're my Khalifa. I love you. I blew into you from my own spirit. Right? I am more eager to see you than you are eager to see me. God keeps saying all of this. I remember you before you remember me. God says every time you remembered me, I had remembered you before that. In fact, I always remember you. Right? So God keeps telling us we're worthy. But at the same time, still it may not easy to heal, right? Because you have to go through the pain of healing. It's a little bit difficult. You know, just like the operation we said on someone's hand. If your hand is wounded and you want to go through an operation, a surgery, they have to open up. It hurts. So what does God do? He says, I'll try to be there for you, right? I'll stand by your side, hold your hand, tell you that you're precious, tell you that you mean so much to me, right? Imagine you're in the operation room and your friend is just standing behind the door or if they allow, even comes to the room and says, I'm with you, I'm with you. Let's get through this together, right? I'm with you. This is what Imam Sadiq says about God. Right? God says, I'm always there with you when you want to heal yourself. What have they told you about me? Why did they tell you I'm going to hurt you? Why do you come to me and asking for me not to hurt you? I never wanted to hurt you in the first place. I wanted to be even there for you after you hurt yourself to help you heal. What did they tell you about me? I'm not like that. How many times do I have to tell you? I've always wanted to help you heal. Right? Yes, Joshan Kabir, didn't you read the first line? I said, I'm Rahman, I'm Rahim, I'm, I'm, I'm loving, I'm compassionate, I am Alim, I know what you did, but I'm Halim, I'm patient, I'm Ghafr al Khataya, I forgive mistakes, I even ignore them, I make it seem as if I don't even know. I said all of this. Why did you accept it when they told you it's my harm you feel you should be saved from? The fire is not from me, it was from you. And not just that, not only the fire was created by yourself when you got angry, when you forgot about me, when you became jealous, even though I told you you're precious as you are, you don't need to have anything to be precious. I told you, but you still wanted to have what someone else had and you created fire. And still I said, it's okay. You know what? You made a mistake. I love you, right? Even in my Quran, I said, I know. You may make mistakes. I'm always there. I'm always there to forgive you, right? Even in Joshan Kabir, how many times I told you that I will be there, right? When you want to heal, I'll hold your hand and let you know, you know what? At the end of this, you're going to feel the connection. Everything's going to be all right, right? But instead, what did you do? Instead of reading Joshan Kabir and feeling my love, they told you, ask God so that you're safe from some imaginary fire, right? So, So this is forgiveness. Forgiveness is healing, right? In the same way that if we have a a problem with our hand, we go to the surgeon, go to the beautiful doctor, right? Say, help us heal this. And at the end of it, we feel like it was worth it. 
right? So we are, and also we need to feel worthy and loved to be able to go through this because it's not easy. So wherever you look, whatever dua you look, look at Munajat Khamsa Ashar, look at Ziyarat Aminullah, look at Munajat Abu Hamd Somali. In every single one of them, the Imam is, I don't know how he could be more clear, is saying that God is loving. God is always there for you. God is always on your side. You know, tonight is not the night. You know, a lot of us, unfortunately, we feel like tonight we have to like try and talk to God, make him like calm. Don't, don't punish me. That's nonsense. That's utter nonsense. How many times do the imams have to say in these duas that my friend, God already loves you. The fire you try to stay away from tonight is the fire of all the wounds we've kept inside. All the times someone hurt us and we didn't let go. All the times we got angry or someone else got angry, we didn't let go. Right? These are the things we try to heal tonight. And God is the love. God is the one holding our hand tonight while we heal ourselves. Right? So now I said, if you look at your relationship with God like that, if you know that forgiveness of forgiveness is this, is this healing, letting go of these bad qualities, then slowly, slowly, you also become like God, right? So when someone even harms you, so, says something that maybe before it would break your heart, right? Or maybe says something which seems offensive or is offensive. But you go inside and you have learned healing. Not just you heal yourself, but you become like God. You can show love to them. Right? So you remind every single person of the message that imams told us tonight. Right? Imams told us tonight that Javad, Fatima, Zahra, Ali, Sina, whatever your beautiful name is, you're beautiful. You're worth it. Deep down, you're so precious. Right? So God's going to be next to you, holding your hand, heal yourself. Come, join God on the other side. So then you become like that as well. Whenever you see someone is creating fire around themselves, either through their anger or through whatever thing, you become that source of love for them. You become like God, right? You say, you know what? You, you're beautiful inside. How can I help, right? That becomes your main worry. How can I help this beautiful soul heal, right? This person is angry. It means just fire. It means that he's lost or she's lost touch with her inner self or with his inner self, the part where he or she's connected to God. How can I remove this fire? How can I help? Let me remind them how worthy they are. Let me hold their hand, you know? In the same way that if your friend's hand gets, you know, harm, you go with them to the hospital. You don't say, oh my God, you broke your heart, arm or hand. This friendship is over. Well, now if someone's angry, if someone's rude to me, well, they've just broken their soul. You don't let go of that friendship. You say, you know what? You broke your soul. Let's, let's help. Let's go and heal this. I'll be there next to you, right? My, I, I'll always hold your hand. I'll be on your side. Let's heal. Because then I would need you to hold my hand the next time. Because I'm going to get angry next time. Right? None of us is perfect. None of us is better than the other one. But this way we keep helping each other. Because at the end of the day we all need to heal. And this is what God told us in Surah. Right? Help each other be patient. Tawasaw is mutual. I'll help you heal. You help me heal. Make it easier for me to apologize to you. I did something wrong. I, I'm sorry. I've changed. Right? If you don't accept, right, I'll remain in this fire. Help me become a better person. Right? At the end of the day, every single one of us at our core, we are created by God. We are this beautiful soul. We are at the core, this beautiful thing created by God. So if I made a mistake, make it easier for me to change, to become the person you like me to be. Right? Help me be a good person. Make it easier for me. And I'll try to do the same for you. Right? And now, if we act like this, if we behave like this, then we can say we had a night of Qadr. Then our, for example, Josh and Kabir has made a difference in us. Right? Otherwise, what is the point of reading that God is like this every year if it doesn't impact us? Because then it's actually worse. God will tell us that I even told you 
I reminded you this is the way to grow, right? Become forgiving, heal, help others to heal, right? I told you I am Alim, I am Rahman, I am Halim, I am Ghafr al Khataya. I told you all of this. So you become like me. What did you do? Why didn't you not become like me? Why do you still not forgive? Not only sometimes we don't forgive, but as soon as someone makes a mistake, we make them feel like there's no other chance for them to come back. You know, we keep putting it in these WhatsApp messages here and there. Oh, that person did this. Why are you doing that? Why are you spreading the fire? Well, do you want to let them know that there's no way for them to come back? Is that how we are told to be? Right? And now, if I feel like if a person has made a mistake, now they need to be punished, etc. Do you know whose mentality I have? Imam Sajjad explained. In the Munajat, <clears throat> I think it's by Imam Sajjad. He says, God, if I go to hell, if what is hell, by the way? We just explained it. The fire is anything I have inside me, right? If I'm left with my jealousy, if I'm left with my wounds, if I'm left with my anger, I am suffering, right? If I don't heal. Imam Sajjad says to God, if I don't heal, who would be happy? Your enemies. Right? But if I heal myself, if I heal all these wounds, all the anger, all the jealousy, all these things which stop me from connecting to my inner self, which stop me from connecting to you, if I heal, then your prophet would be happy. Right? And I am sure, Imam says, I am sure, I swear to God, Imam says, that the happiness of your prophet is more beloved to you than the happiness of your enemy. Do you just do you realize what the Imam just said? Imam is telling God, God, I know. If I heal myself, you're going to be happier than if I don't heal myself. So literally, Imam is saying, God wants every single one of you in heaven from God's side. The issue is over. How could the Imam be more clear? He even said, Wallah. On God's side, God wants everyone in heaven. He's already given it, said, done, over. So who's stopping us, ourselves? As long as I have this jealousy, as long as I don't forgive, I'm creating right now. Right? It's, it's nothing crazy, this, this nod we talk about. It's happening right now. If I, for example, have a grudge over someone, do I need to die to suffer? No, right now that grudge is coming to my mind every single second. Every single moment. Every single moment that someone did to me and I didn't forgive. Well, I'm suffering. I'm reliving a bad experience every day of my life. Well, that is suffering. So heal yourself. But not just that. Know that anytime someone else also did something, if you want them to suffer, if you want them to get punished for that, you are making God's enemies happy. Imam said, God wants every single soul in this world to be healed. Every single soul. Because at the end of the day, God has created every single one of us. And we are no different in the soul we have received from God. I am as important to God as you are, as that person is, as that person is. And Imam Sajjad says, God wants every single person to heal. Right? So if you don't help others, know that at least at that point you are different to God. You are even different to the Prophet, to the A'imah. That's how the A'imah were like. Right? Don't we always say, that, for example, the story of Imam Hussein and Hur, the person who stopped Imam Hussein's army. Like, can you think of anything worse than that? But Imam says, you know what? Ultimately, there's a beautiful soul inside here. It's a beautiful soul. If I can heal this soul, God would be happy. So Imam is nice to them. And as soon as Hur decides to heal himself, Imam said, welcome. We've been waiting for you. Nothing about why did you do this to us? Nothing about, you know, you stopped or uh, you stopped this. My children are going to go through this and this and this and that. No. As soon as you decided to heal, well done. Come. Even some other people. 
some people who were not doing good things, who were creating suffering for themselves. Imam said, even if I can heal this person, God would be happier. Right? So, if we really want to do follow Joshan Kabir, that's what we should be like. Heal ourselves and help others heal. And know that every single person who heals themselves has had their night of Qadr. If I even heal one uh, thing inside me, that's my Qadr. But otherwise, if I even read all these du'as 100 times, 200 times, 300 times, but nothing inside me changes, I'm still carrying that fire within me. I can say two million times, Khalisna min an nari ya Rab, save me from fire, but I'm carrying that fire inside me. Fire of jealousy, fire of anger, fire of greed, fire of grudge, fire of not letting go of people's mistakes, fire of not letting go of the time I was... And you know, not all of these are our mistakes, no. Our mistake was to keep onto them, right? Sometimes someone harmed us, it's true. Someone maybe um, bullied me, hurt me, touched on my insecurities. That was their wrong. But it was my mistake to keep on to that. Why should I keep on to all the times they bullied me? Why should I keep on to all the times someone said something hurtful to me? Well, they made a mistake. They put it out there. They created a fire. And I took that fire and kept it inside me. Why? Let it go. Let go of that. Heal. Right? Once we heal... We feel the change. Everyone opens up. Our connections become better. Our relationships become better. Okay. Take care of yourself. And I hope, inshallah, that every single one of us makes the most out of it. And uh, see you, inshallah, in another occasion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.